Hello everyone. Today we're going to build a whistle. First, let's start by making a sphere. This is going to be the ball that's inside the whistle. We'll then lift it above on the z-axis, on this blue axis, and then continue with making our whistle. First, we're going to grab our circle tool, and we're going to form a sphere with two circles and the follow me tool. When you click on the circle, you want to zoom in here towards Temple's feet. Click on the point of origin and pull out along the red axis. Make this first circle 20 millimeters. Let's go ahead and delete Temple's. And now we can zoom in. We're going to rotate so that our circle tool <clears throat> is no longer blue. We want to rotate so that it's green, so it's not going to be a vertical circle. Click on the point of origin and release. Lift up and now type 7. We want the radius of this ball inside the whistle to be 7 millimeters. Enter. Use your select tool to select the flat surface. And then use your follow me tool to click on the vertical surface. You can erase this flat surface. <clears throat> and now you'll see we have holes in the top of the sphere. If you do this on a bigger diameter circle or sphere, you won't have this problem. But because the geometry is so small, uh, the computer doesn't know what to do with it here. Not a big problem. We can solve that by using the line tool. And just click on any one endpoint. And once you click there, go to the next adjacent endpoint. So first click, second click, and it covers it up. You can now use your eraser tool to get rid of that line. But don't just use the erase tool. Make sure you're holding down the option key on a Mac and the control key on your Chromebooks or PCs. As you're holding down that control key or that option key, then use your eraser tool to click and it will get rid of that line. Let's do the same thing on the other side. Okay. Now we're ready to move this, so grab your Select tool, select the entire object, then grab your Move tool, click anywhere on the object, and we want to lift it on the vertical plane, keep it on the blue axis. Now if you're having trouble with that, if it's moving around on you, hit the up arrow on the keyboard. Now that you're on the Move tool, hit the up arrow. That will lock it into this vertical Z plane. And I would lift it between 50 and 60 millimeters. Move it up between 50 and 60 millimeters. Click. And then deselect by hitting the escape key. Now use your circle tool again to make a circle that has a radius of 15 millimeters. That was at the point of origin. And now we're going to draw in a rectangle that is 35 by 7. So where this green axis intersects the perimeter, I'll click for my first endpoint and pull my cursor down to the right. Incidentally, if your, if your um, rectangle looks like this, just hit the control key on your keyboard if you have a Mac or a PC, the option key if you have a Mac and it will return it to this view here, which is what we're looking for. And type in 35 comma 7. Enter. And we can now delete these three lines. We don't need those. At this point, we're going to build the right side. We want everything to have a thickness of 2 millimeters. So I'll push-pull this up 2 millimeters. 
And now I'm going to make a copy of it so I have one for the left side. Grab your Select tool to select the object. Your Move tool, you can click anywhere on there. Click and release. And now you're going to start lifting this so it's above the ball, except you want to keep it on the blue axis. You want it to stay on the blue axis. So to make this easier, hit the up arrow on the keyboard. It locks it in. And we also want to maintain our original object in addition to this new one. So we actually want to copy it, not just move it. So on your keyboard on the Mac, hit the Option key on the PC or the uh, Chromebook, hit the Control key, then it will give you then your original, and then you can place your second one. Again, just make sure it's above the ball. Other than that, we don't really have a specific dimension. Click and release. Hit the Escape key to deselect. We're going to make the walls for our whistle, so we want to offset by two millimeters. So grab your offset tool, click on the surface. If you go too close to the center, it'll just look like a circle, but as you hover closer to the edge, you'll see that you're offsetting here. Type in two, enter. And now we want to get rid of this piece here so that we can actually blow air into the whistle. So use your eraser tool to erase that, and then use your Move tool to click on the ends of the lines, so we're extending them here, to the edge, click a second time. So don't use the Line tool, that'll give you two separate line segments. When we hover here, this is still one line segment. So you're simply extending this line with the Move tool by clicking on the end of the line, moving right to the edge, clicking a second time. We're now going to taper this opening here so that it's three millimeters wide here. And we're going to taper it down so it's less over here. Use your line tool, hover this point, and lift it straight up on the green axis. And we're going to move just to the left a little bit of there. I don't have a specific dimension, but just move to the left a little bit. Click and release. And you want to stay on that green line, on that green axis. We know that this line is two millimeters away from the edge. We just offset that. So we're going to go about one more, go about three millimeters. Doesn't have to be exact, but just get close. Click and release. So now we have one line here. And we're going to go back. And we are going to select where we just extended that offset line. So I'm going to hover over that endpoint and click. I can then erase this line here. I'm going to draw one more diagonal line. This is for the slot so that we can let the air out of the top. I'll grab my whistle tool. Come over a short distance. Click and release angle up and away, and click and release. Again, I don't have specific dimensions for you. You can adjust this how you want, but just go a short distance, click and release, angle away, click again. Use your erase tool to erase this part. And we're now ready to place our circle. Our sphere, I should say. So grab our Select tool, select the object, use your Move tool. You can click anywhere on the surface, click and release. We want to pull it straight down, but we can get that lost. So again, hit the up and down arrow so it maintains right on that edge. And now we want to zoom in here, and we want this ball to just barely touch the surface. Okay. So we'll just go till it just touches. Just a bit too far. And the reason we don't want to go too far here is just because when we look at breaking this loose later, we just want the minimum point of contact.
and we'll probably take a paper clip and punch this ball loose. So what we may want to do while we're on the move tool is as we click to move this, if you hit your right arrow you can adjust on this red axis. You could move it a little bit closer to the edge so that it's easier for us to push a paper clip through there. You just want to make sure You just want to make sure that you don't actually touch the walls of the circle. Hit the escape key when you're done to deselect. Now we can push pull these walls up 20 millimeters. I'm going to hit the escape key. Actually, I'm going to grab the select just to make sure I'm deselected off of everything. And I'll grab my push pull. Click and release, lift up, type 20, enter, and then I can double click on this surface to lift it up the same distance, and I can place my top. Select the entire top plate, and when you grab your move tool here, I recommend to click as the point to move as this point down here of that top plate. Click and release. Now I want to go straight down so to help me with that I can hit the up arrow on the keyboard it'll lock it on that z-axis. And now I'm just going to hover and click on that point of my base right there. In other words it could be difficult to figure out exactly where I wanted this to be. Click and release, hit the escape key to deselect, and then erase these extra lines. If you happen to have uh, your part here that has vertical lines in it, that's okay, but leave that geometry alone. Only click the line segments that are horizontal. Do not click the vertical line segments. We're going to put a loop on the back. So I'm going to align my blue and red axis so as they move there. So I'm looking straight at the back. I'm not going to use my two point arc tool to draw an arc here at the base of this whistle. So I'm going to hover over this green endpoint that lines up with that red axis line. I'm going to go one full line segment. There's 24 line segments in this current circle. I'm going to go one full. So that's to the next green endpoint, and then 50%. So I'm going to go to that midpoint. So I'm going one and a half segments of this circle. One and a half. I'm going to click and release. I'm now going to hover over that center and do the same thing on the other side. I'm going to go one full line segment plus 50%. There's my midpoint. Click and release, and I'm going to pull out until I get to a half circle. So it will snap. At one point here, as I st I'm not clicking, I'm just hovering out, it'll snap and it'll say it's a half circle. I'll click and release, it'll fill that area in for me. Okay, it's about 5.69 millimeters away from that edge. Okay. Each, the thickness of each side here is two millimeters on the top and bottom. We pushed up a wall of 20 millimeters, so we have a 24 millimeter tall object right here and we're going to center this in the middle so the middle right here where the midpoint is is 12 millimeters so we're gonna push pull this up to 14 millimeters and push pull the bottom up to 10 millimeters giving us a four millimeter wide four millimeter thick loop for us to put a string or a key ring on so grab our push pull tool click and release and lift up Type in 14, enter. Now go to the bottom, click and release, lift up, type in 10, enter. And that gives us a four millimeter wide thick loop here. And we can delete those lines. We don't need those. We'll now make this opening here in the middle. And to use that, we're going to use our 
offset tool. Click on this edge, just the blue rim, not the entire surface, just the blue rim here. Click and release. Push down 1.5. We're going to go in 1.5 millimeters. Enter. Then use your push-pull tool to delete the middle. Click on that. And then I'm going to rotate to the bottom and just hover over this edge. When I click on the face here or on the edge, it will delete everything inside there, which is just what I want. And you don't need this line here. At this point, you have a nice looking whistle. But as the 3D printer builds this up, builds, 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 when it gets over to this point, it's going to be drawing this in midair which is going to be a problem for us because the plastic is just going to fall, okay? It won't stay supported in midair. So we're going to build a support here, but it's important that that support does not touch the surface or it will join it as though it's one solid part of the object. So let's take a look at that. We're going to line it up so we're looking right at the back again. Use a rectangle tool. We can adjust this later. I'm going to click and release and just make a circle, or excuse me, make a rectangle. Right now it looks like it's about 3 by 12 is what I have. You may adjust that a little bit differently. Maybe 2 by 11. Click and release. Use my push-pull to get close to, but do not touch that surface. You need to see some daylight there on the other side. <clears throat> now, <clears throat> just to save us on 3D printing, we don't need this extra part over here, so I'm just going to push that away. You also don't want it touching the wall. <clears throat> it's easier or better to span this gap, because the 3D printer will go from this solid surface, and then as it goes it can fall on here. If you have a little gap here, that's all right. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to triple click on that block, grab my move tool, hit the right arrow so it's locked in on that red axis, and I'm going to go out to the edge. Hit the escape key to deselect. <coughs> Excuse me. And it's really important that this surface is the same height as this surface. If it's not, the 3D printer will start printing, for example, this, and then two or three layers later we'll print this, and it will just be all over the place because it will be on midair. So if you're not sure, use your push-pull tool, click on the bottom surface, and then hover over this edge. When you click, it will make sure that those two are at the same height. And that's all there is to it. Good job.